Hi. So I have this really um, embarrassing confession. Oh, for I those of you who are wondering if I'm cold, <laughs> how do you like this, huh? Whoops, this was in my uh, this was in my hat thing when I did my hat thing. I don't know if it's a sheep or a goat. I got it for myself for my cat. My is birthday. Doing Weird. Do you see that? What the holy hell? There's no room for you up there, cats. Why are you doing that, you silly cat? You can't possibly think that's going to work. And there's the other one. Where's the other one? Hi, that's Ivan. Ivan. And this, that's Chaco. Chaco is 20 years old. Okay, so see, I'm wearing my hat, so you don't have to worry if I'm cold. It's not really that cold in here, but we're wearing the hat. Now, I want to show you the culprit. Can you see him? Whoa. Say, hi, Colt. Uh, I've got him chained to the filing cabinet so he can't go running around the neighborhood and play with my landlord's dog and cause trouble. Um, uh, er, making coffee. See, you boil the water. I should be careful not get the webcam too close to it because of, like, uh, whoa, you know, uh, steam. Okay, so I have a terrible confession to make. First of all, I want to thank everybody for putting up with my self-pity and self-indulgence the other day. I scared myself. I should not have come home and um, looked up stuff about multiple sclerosis online. That was a bad mistake. I also probably should have laid off uh, checking out about uh, numbness in both ears. Look it up. Just look it up. If you want to know, look it up. It it's doesn't it's not indicative of anything easy or simple. So I want to thank you. I got lots of private messages, lots of comments, lots of hugs, uh, lots of respect, and I really I I can't tell you how much that helped. God, you can't believe it. See, human beings are social animals, and I'm living in isolation. We're supposed to touch each other, you know. Babies can't thrive without touch, all that stuff. Um, which is probably, which is not probably. It is one of the reasons I have so many animals is I need to be touched. I need to be touched. And animals love to touch. Especially Fatty Waddy. Fatty's the most touchy cat I've ever had. I don't mean, well, sometimes she's touchy. But she likes to touch. I am making a cigarette. This is where I keep my tobacco, which is almost gone, but I have more. And then I have another can. Here's my other can. Oh, and then that is the filters and the papers and that stuff. Okay, so I'm going to roll a cigarette while I'm doing this. So I need touching just like everybody else does. And so I have animals around me so that pretty much most of the time somebody is touching me. They all protect me. They all protect me. And they do a very good job of it. I know when stuff is going on. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, also, the amusement, the companionship. The, I'm not making excuses or justifications. I'm trying to explain. And then there's the whole communicating with something that isn't a human being. God, the permutations of that. Every animal has its own distinct stuff. And then, of course, in different species, there's other stuff. But like the goats, for instance, I had no idea what to expect. Wow. I can't even explain it to you. I really can't. I can't. God, what? I mean, the, the dynamics of those relationships. I had four goats. All of them were different from the others. And they weren't like any other animal I'd ever had. You know what? I've got this um, masking tape here. I mean, duct tape. I'll explain to you why. But I'm going to put the camera in there so I can um, make a cigarette. I don't know what's going to happen or what you're going to see. Oh, you're going to see my pterodactyl and my witch. Um, okay, so... But there's the emotional factor. There's the support factor. There's the good job buddy factor. There's the person who said, um, I don't know if I have people's permission to use their names inside. They can't pronounce his username anyway. Um, the guy who does your Bible on psychotherapy, Bob Mere fact, maybe anyway, um, who said that, uh, I need to be, well, first of all, he called me a chick, which should have offended me, but didn't. And basically it was a kind of a beat. Oh, fierce. He used the word fierce, which is not a word normally associated with me. Neither is chick. So that was kind of fun. 
Um, and people found out about me because one of the tags was multiple sclerosis. And people who are just barely getting tested and people who are veterans and, I, I, you know, wow, whew, what a relief, you know. Especially if you're an atheist and you're going through um, a disability crisis and uh, challenges and you're questioning the medical system that's supposed to take care of you but which could victimize you worse than any thug on the street if you're not careful and you're not proactive in your care. So it's been really, I, listen to my voice. Do you hear how much better I am? Okay. So now I have a confession to make. First, let me put on some more coffee. Lighting the cigarette. I'll tell you what, since I started making my own roll your own tobaccos, I mean, yeah, uh, with real tobacco, not that. Factory food will kill you, right? Well, guess what? Factory cigarettes will kill you. I'm not in denial about what inhaling smoke means or tars or any of that stuff. <coughs> but factory cigarettes have things in them that don't grow on trees or they're not there's nothing natural about a factory cigarette and i didn't know only recently did i discover factory cigarettes uh, uh homegrown cigarettes and home oh my god homegrown tobacco homegrown tobacco i'll do a whole thing on that one day this is not this is not anything you're going to find in a store I can't. I don't even like smoking factory cigarettes. If I'm out on the road or something, and I get a nicotine craving, and I don't have my rollies with me, and I ask somebody, "Excuse me, may I have a cigarette?" Ugh, I'm always sorry. Oh, it's a difference between this cigarette is prime rib. It's got a great flavor, good aroma. It's got just the right amount of nicotine. It's satisfying. It smokes slowly. It goes out when you're not smoking it, you know, because there's nothing in it to work like a fuse. So you'll smoke more and burn up more cigarettes and buy more, you know. Mm, the flavor, it's a pleasure, you know. You really enjoy it. So you don't want another one right away because it wasn't satisfying enough. This is the difference between prime rib and McDonald's. Why waste your money on McDonald's? Yeah, because if I have prime rib, I don't eat as much because I savor it, you know? But a McDonald's hamburger, that's just because I'm out someplace and there's no other food and I'm starving to death and I need protein and it's just something to wolf down. Ugh. And it's just not satisfying. It's like a dry hump. I make really good coffee, too. I don't have a lot of fancy stuff in my life, so what I do have around me really gives me pleasure. Really gives me pleasure. I insist on it. I won't live a second-class life just because I'm poor. If I have to dig it out of a dumpster, and honey, you are looking at stuff out of the dumpster. But if I have to dig it out of the dumpster, it's going to be quality stuff. Beautiful cigarette. Okay, so I have a true confession. You saw the pink tape, which has now disappeared. Isn't this stuff wonderful? Do you know, look online on uh, YouTube and look for a duct tape prom. Uh, there are high schools now where the kids make their prom clothes, tuxedos and gowns. They make them out of colored duct tape. Look it up. Look it up. You will love it. You will love it. Oh, my God, the imagination. It's a lot of work. Okay, the reason the duct tape is out and there was, oh my gosh, where'd it go? There was this old, where is it? Ratty razor blade. Look, it's even dirty. It belonged to the guy who used to live here. I found it in the mirror in the bathroom this morning. It has old whiskers in it, but it was still sharp. I have a true confession to make. You know, I've got this beautiful new web camera that you're looking at right now. It's got a little microphone right there. And it just, it's, you can zoom it. It does all kinds of cute stuff. It's on a really long cord. I mean, I can go like three feet away from the real world. Can you see the cord and see there's the uh, splicer inner thing? And so I've got, see, I can move it around. Whee! Getting sick yet? Um, so, um, you know, I've got this tiny little bed. I may try to shoot it, but there's really no light over there, so I really can't show you. And as you can see, when it's in low light, I get stripedies. That's where the stripedies are coming from. In bright light, no problem. Um, um, it's apparently picking up and focusing on uh, little imperfections in the lens. 
Okay, so here's the true confession. I do most, that, that the last couple of, hey, dog, you got to come here because you're on a chain, dude. Um, the last couple of videos I made, I did them from bed. I'm so embarrassed because that's where my computer is. And I call it my Captain Kirk bed because I have the controls for my uh, electric blanket. I have little lamps. I have the whole computer set up. And I mean the whole computer set up with all the little whiz bangs and goo And those are all on a shelf over my bed. Um, there's even a printer up there. Um, uh, so I lie in bed and I control the universe like Captain Kirk with all the little knobs and whistles and bells and stuff. So I had the webcam up there, and I unplug it when I'm done with it because I don't know um, if, if it's going to cause a surge or not. I, I unplug it, I roll it up, and I stash it up by my pillow. Well, that last video, I was so emotionally distraught and so out of sorts and so not really grounded and not really... It was authentic what I was broadcasting, but it was not complete. Does that make sense? It was narrowly focused on crisis. Um, so I was like in crisis and really, geez, doing not functioning too well. And I forgot to unplug the webcam and I just left it over at arm's length from me um, up next to the window where I took my little, my pillows, my books, the stuff I need to grab with my left hand. I left it there and um, I couldn't sleep really. Um, dogs were barking. I was worried. Um, I'd scared myself doing internet research too soon. I haven't even had an MRI yet. Um, so I scared myself and I was ruminating and I forgot the webcam was there. And all of a sudden, my computer started telling me that there was a power surge in my USB hub. I have one of those things where you can, hey, Colt, come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Don't run away. Come here. He unclipped himself. Come on. Come on. Turn around. He can't figure out how to turn around a big dope. Yeah. Um, you have to talk, baby. Talk to him because he's simple. Er, okay, what? Okay, so I have this USB hub. I think you can plug like five USB things into it. It has never said a word to me before. And suddenly my computer says that there's a power surge. I thought, what the hell? So I unplugged it. And I plugged everything back in because I have a, rem a remote control uh, mouse and a bunch of other stuff plugged into it. Thumb drives and this camera. Well, it did that twice. And then it said something very urgent. I can't remember the exact wording because it's only happened once and I didn't really get it. But it said something very urgent. It was more than just a power surge. More than just a power surge. So I thought, what the hell? And then I went, oh my God, the camera. Colt, please come here. Come here, Colt. Come on, baby. Come here. He's nervous. He gets nervous and he hears me talking and he's not sure if it's dangerous and if he's in trouble and he's clumsy and awkward because he panics and he's pretty sure he got in serious trouble, but he's really just being a big old doofus, which is what he does. Say hi to the people. Okay. I thought, oh, the camera. So I started chasing the line for the camera. Like I said, Colt's nervous. And Colt punishes me. He'll take my shoes. He'll steal my stuffed animals, take them out in the mud. He'll punish me if I'm not giving him what he wants. And he was mad because he was chained to the bed because I didn't want him running around the neighborhood bothering. I'm trying to find him a home. This isn't fair to him. Uh, bothering the landlord's dog and I don't want the landlord dealing with me. So he was chained to the bed and he was mad about it. Not that he wanted to go anywhere. He just didn't want to be chained. So he decided to punish me. Yeah, here it comes. I am so sorry. The dog chewed through the wires of the camera. So, the same day that I have a doctor telling me I might have multiple sclerosis, 
the same day that a huge snowstorm is coming and while I've got water and food and provisions and stuff what if the electricity goes out we could freeze to death I won't be able to drive yada 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 these are just things you have to think about when you're rural and alone and have disabilities and not much strength and if the power goes out I can't heat the place I won't have internet access what if the DSL lines go? you know and I hadn't had any well anyway I hadn't I, I I hadn't had any rest and uh the dog chewed through the camera oh god well as you can see the camera's working because I got up this morning and with that old razor blade and with that pink duct tape I very carefully took it all apart and I very carefully put it back together so that there's still an aluminum sheath did you see that the power just went out and then it blinked back on good thing this thing's on batteries the aluminum sheath around the copper wire that wraps around all the four little wires so the aluminum sheath is back on each of the four little wires is spliced together um and they're all wrapped around in here that's why this is so fat and then tape over the whole thing and i will do even more but i wanted to show you I felt so bad. The person who got me this camera is not a wealthy person. And it was such a kindness. And the cat's knocking things down. And I hardly even had this thing. And then... Ugh. So I'm feeling better. The camera is working. I'm so sorry. I'm not an irresponsible person. It's just a tiny little space with a big nervous dog. Well, he's not that big, but... In this house compared to weasel and considering how much energy he's big he takes up a lot of space he demands a lot of time and attention he's a real prima donna and this place is really small and I don't have a good fence so thank you I'm feeling a lot better now I'm facing facing the weekend you know Christmas Eve Christmas Day I'm facing the weekend because I know people won't be around online and uh, uh, my neighbor has invited me over for ham, but she boils her ham, and she makes this awful pea salad. Colt, come here. She makes this awful pea salad with Miracle Whip and American cheese. For those of you who don't live in the United States and might not know what American cheese is, it's the stuff they put on McDonald's cheeseburgers, and all it is is salt and grease. It's horrible. And she boils the ham until it tastes like dishwater. She boils it in a crock pot. A ham. So I'm going over for ham. Barbara, fundamentalist Christian, but I'm out. I'm out. She knows I'm a lesbian. She's not, not a lesbian. She knows I'm a queer. She assumes I'm a lesbian because I'm not going to try to explain queer. Um, and she knows I'm an atheist. I'm not sure she understands what that means. Or that she accepts it as reality because she, you know, her mind is in the whole God thing and the praying thing and you got to love your enemies. And I said, why? And she didn't have an answer. And nobody would ever, she'd never questioned that before. Why do I have to love my enemies? Well, I think I should avoid them. <laughs> so Barbara's, Barbara's a trip. You should see her. She looks like a little dyke. She does. She got short hair chubby kind of butch swagger because she's chubby you know she looks like a little dyke it's really funny she might be a dyke just doesn't know it you never know anyway so that's my update and the camera is fixed and i couldn't tell you and i was so ashamed and i only told one person i told goxter that the camera got chewed through and between that and the snowstorm and the multiple sclerosis all he could say was holy shit skype me <laughs> Oh, so thank you, everybody. Thank you. Golly. You guys don't even know me. And you all, you were right there. Even if you just said something totally stupid, you know, you were all right there. And uh, that's the best medicine I could hope for. Validation, respect, compassion. Nobody insulted me. Nobody said, it's God's will. I didn't get trolled or flamed. So, thanks for validating me. Really, thank you.
Okay, back to making coffee, reading Christopher Hitchens and downloading to YouTube, who seems to have developed a real antipathy and personal hatred for me for some reason. Christ, it took, what, 36 hours, almost 48 hours to post that one video? It took three times? God. All right, I'm out of here. I got to edit this. It's long. It's like 21 minutes. Shut up. Bye.